441st chapter, Job chapter 5 is how much we've been since Genesis chapter 1. 441 chapters. Call now that there be any that will answer thee. Eliphaz is still talking from chapter 4. He again says things that are right, but they're at the wrong time. Call now if there will be any that will answer. Now, Job is in bitterness, bitterness of tears and anguish and of loss, his children, his own pain and sorrow. And he's like, call on somebody and who's going to answer them? Well, Eliphaz answered and Job didn't call. Here's a guy who, who, who's down and out. And he's like, who's going to help you? Definitely wrong words. And to which of the saints will thou turn? Now, there's a Catholic church out there. I'm sorry, I named the name. That their saints are dead. They make saints of dead people. Well, right there, that tells you that they're not Bible, because Bible saints are alive and well and living. So... Eliphaz is telling us that there are people that love the Lord and doing right. And he's like, well, which one, which of them are you going to turn to? Well, maybe somebody a lot better than what you are. I mean, this is your first grief, grief counselor. You say, what do you mean? This guy's causing more grief than, than Job needs. For wrath kills the foolish man. He must be accusing Job of what he said in chapter 3 of wrath. Because there's been nobody yet, as far as these five men, if Elihu is there yet, we know there's three men in Job. There has nobody spoke up in wrath yet. So he's got to be calling Job wrathful by what he said in chapter 3. You know, I cursed the day I was born, let it be no. You know, the day I was born, let no one be happy, let there be no good. Well, it just sounds like a guy who's just had enough pain and needed to open up his mouth and get it out. He need to blow the steam. And that's nothing wrong with that. You've got to blow off steam. And envy slays the silly one. He's charging Job with wrath. He's charging Job with envy. Envy is, is a deadly Sin. Proverbs says that, you know, you can stand before wrath, you can stand before anger, but who can stand before envy? Envy is what the, the Pharisees and the religious people delivered uh, Jesus to the Roman government. Envy was Absalom who wanted the government of his father, the throne. Envy was because Cain, uh, Abel's offering was better than Cain's. What is Job? I mean, all right, maybe Job's looking around. You know, I wish my family was like that right now, but it's not envy. He's not going to kill anybody over it. I have seen the foolish taking root. Good for you. Now you're calling Job foolish. Listen, Eliphaz and Job, and Job 3, 4, and 5, these are only two men that have been talking. Who could Eliphaz be talking about? Either he's talking about Job, or he just got his big fat trap open. I've seen the foolish take root, but suddenly I curse his habitation. You know, those that are not saved, those who are wicked, you see them, they flourish, they got money and stuff like that, and God looks at that, I curse you. But yet, Bible-believing Christians, Christians are doing that every day today. You say, well, how do we do that? You let them die and go to hell. You don't tell them about the gospel. Matter of fact, in most cases, you envy, you want what they have. How many times when that, 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 that jackpot thing gets over a million dollars? How many Christians waste their money on that rather than relying on the Lord and put the money in the, 
into the treasury of the church for missionary, for tracts, and for whatever work. He, so he curses the wicked. He doesn't try to get him right. His children, wrong time to be talking about children. There are ten graves in, in Joe's backyard. His children are far from safety. Oh, talking to a man whose ten children are dead. And they are crushed in the gate. Why is he talking to Job? Maybe they were crushed when they were trying to get out of the house. The door to the house, maybe. And I don't know if I'm stretching that too far. Crushing the gate would also be where the judges are, where the city folks are. Where if they've done wickedness and they've been tried before the, the city officials by the judges, by the Levites. Well, it wouldn't be the Levites. Take that back. By the judges of the gates and found guilty. Well, there's two applications there. Maybe three. Maybe he's trying to say that Job's children were wicked. That's why it happened to him. Neither is there any to deliver them. That says a lot. I don't know what it has to do with Job. It says a lot. It's true. Wait till lost man, wicked man who, who deny the, the, the revelation that God's given to any age. And when they stand before God, the great white throne judgment, the gate of what? The gates of hell. <laughs> great white throne judgment is a... A gate of hell because that's from there you go into hell if you found your name not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, Revelation chapter 20. That's crushing. See, he's right, but don't make mention of children, don't imply that Job's wicked. It's the wrong time. Well, instead, he should, he should have got done, put his arms around Job and say, Hey, you want to pray for a little while? I'm just going to sit over here in this corner. Any, else, any other steam you want to blow, go for it, Job. You want a hug? I'll give you a hug. You want a question answered? You ask me a question, and then I will speak if I know the answer. And you may have times in your life, especially if this family gets off into a ministry, we might put in a case where you got a Christian, we're dealing with them, they got sorrow, they got lost, whatever that, and you might hear to say, you might hear them blow off steam and say a lot of things that are wrong. What are you going to do? Open up the machete and start charging them? You shouldn't have said that. No. It's revealing their real heart to God. You're just listening. And you go in there open fire, you know, blah, 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 you're wrong, blah, blah, you're a sinner. You should never know. Maybe that's what God wanted them to get out of their heart and reveal to them what their troubles are. Maybe if Eliphaz never opened up his mouth, maybe Job would have kept on speaking chapter 4 and chapter 5. And then finally, you know what? It would came out about Job's sin. And then the book would have been a lot shorter than it should have been. But you start throwing accusations at him. Whose harvest the hungry eateth up. After they die. And take it even out of the thorns. No one's taking care of it. Thorns have grown. And the robber swallows up their substance. Although affliction cometh not forth of the dust. Man is dust. Truth. 
Trouble is not from nature. James 4 1 and Ephesians 6 12. It did not come with the creation of God. It, <coughs> excuse me. It came as a result of Genesis chapter 3. Man caused his own trouble by disobeying God. Had Adam and Eve taken that tree of life, you know what the picture would have been by them taking the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God would have came down and say, hey, what'd you do? Well, we ate that tree. Which one? Well, we did not eat a tree you told us not to eat of. So you ate of that tree, yes. Okay, I gotta put a flaming sword around the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Why? Well, when they took the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he had to put a flame around the tree of life, else they'd be living eternally as sinners and vile. Had they t taken what God wanted them to have, then God would have prevented them from the, from the evil tree, and we would be living forever today, eternity, as sinless creatures of God. And Job would never even be in our Bible. And then we would not have any affliction. It does not come from dust. That's right. But he's talking to a guy sitting in a dust pile with dust on his head, on his head and mourning. Well, Job, that don't that's not where our afflictions came from. You see what I'm saying? He's looking at Job putting dust on his head. That's not where the affliction came from. You want to see my diploma? Neither does trouble spring out of the ground. That's that's one hundred percent true. Even that tree, you say, well, that tree of knowledge of good and evil came out of the ground. Yeah, but they did not have to eat of it. You know, you can have a poison ivy bush in your backyard, and listen, as long as you don't touch it, some poison ivies are pretty. The leaves. That's not trouble, poison ivy. A snake is not trouble until you until you do something to make them angry. That poison ivy tree or bush is not trouble until you touch it. So what he's saying is, Job, this trouble. There's a reason for this trouble. And he's going about the wrong way of trying to get it out. Yet man is born into trouble or onto trouble. So as soon as man is born, that's why he cries. That's why the first thing he does, he, he, he's born bald and toothless. And has no, has no covering. I'd be crying too. Because if he lives in old age, he'll be bald, toothless, and no clothes when he dies. They say, well, they dress you in, in the coffin. Yeah, but before they put you in the coffin, you're naked as they wash you down. As the sparks fly it upward, and that's a fire. When you watch those fires go up, every fire will have a spark going up. And as that happens, now I don't know why he referenced fire here, but there was a there's one of the things that came down was the fire of God. That see see it's how it's wrong. See how <laughs> children fire oh man. It's right. Wrong analogies. Wrong things to say to a man who just gone through this. I would seek unto God. You should have done that in verse one of chapter four. You know how he know you know he did not seek God? Because you go to the end of the book and God tells these three guys, You better repent and you better bring a sacrifice. Or your name is mud. And he doesn't say anything, I believe it's Elihu, I, I may got his name wrong. But he doesn't say anything to Elihu. So the Lord's mad at these guys for saying what they're saying. You know a guy can get up in the pulpit and say everything that's right and say it wrong? You say, what, are you, what do you mean? What about if he uses a Bible that's not the Bible? What about if he gets up and preaches a message and leaves things out? Because people in the congregation 
If I preach about that, that guy gives a lot of money. How about the music in the church? How about taking a beautiful hymn that has been written for the Lord and you add, I don't know what you want to say, music, puke behind it. A boom, a boom, a boom, a boom, boom, boom. Huh? That's wrong. I would seek unto God and unto God would I commit my cause. <laughs> yeah, right. Should have did that in chapter 4, verse 1. Uh, we spoke in uh, 29 verses of 48 verses. And finally now we're, we're going to ask God. <laughs> finally. 39 verses of 48, we're finally going to, we're going to mention God. 39 verses, uh, should have done it in verse number 1. Which doeth great things, amen. Well, that should have been, that should have been verse number 2 for Eliphaz speaking. And unsearchable, marvelous things without number. Now, wouldn't that have been great? That would have been verse 2 and verse 3 of chapter 4. And Job would sit there like, huh. Oh. Well, boys, yeah, Joe, let's the four of us sit here and pray to God and find out what God's really doing here. There's a point that Job says, listen, you guys are miserable uh, physicians. Call them quacks. These guys are speaking, making Job angry. Dare him think talk about children. Not my children are they dead. He talk about fire coming down, saying my children are the ones that are not. Had he spoken about God in the beginning, made it the four of them were got in a prayer meeting. Wouldn't that anger the devil? Well, Lord, you you let me at him. Skin for skin, all that a man has. All right, go ahead. But don't save his life. All right, he's, he's got this pain and all that. And they see the devil's over there. And he looks over. There's a prayer meeting going on with God. Has thou concerned my servant for the third time, Satan? He fears me. He chews evil. And he's down there having a prayer meeting with his friends. Seeking me what to do. Well, Lord, let me... No, 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 Satan. You had enough with him. My boy is repented. He wants to know what he's done wrong. I'm going to start helping him out now. I'm done with you, Satan. For Job, for this, for this thing. Listen, the Bible speaks that God uses Satan as his correcting rod. Who giveth rain upon the earth, true, and sendeth waters upon... the the fields. Well, we're getting close to nature. We're getting close to weather. We're getting close to the big wind that killed his children. But this is true. The Bible says that God giveth rain to the just and to the unjust. To set up on high those below. Well, David was a shepherd, a little shepherd boy, that was even last when Samuel came into Jesse's house, and he's like, I, I've seen all your boys. Don't you have another one here? God sent me, said one of your boys, and I went through them all. But yeah, I got it, David. He's out there in the field. He's nobody important. He just watches the sheep. Well, you better bring him over here before we eat. And David comes walking in. That's the one. That's the one. The entire priesthood is shot. But here's a little boy named Samuel that his mother gave him to the Lord. And he's the one getting things right when the priest won't. He won't even get his own children right. So this is true. He set up on high those that are low. And those which mourn may be exalted in safety. Hannah mourned for, for the persecution she was getting from the, the second wife or the first wife. Rachel mourned because she couldn't have a child. The Bible says that Rachel mourned for all the children that were killed by Herod. The women of Jerusalem wept over Jesus going through death. He disappointed the devices of the crafty. 
That verse is kind of hard, dude, because what do you do with Adolf Hitler? You mean, if it wasn't for God, maybe evolution that Adolf Hitler believed in, he believed in evolution? You mean it could have been worse if God didn't stop him? All the babies that die, all the things that, if there wasn't a God in heaven, it would have been worse. That's what that verse is saying. So that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Enterprise is an attempt or undertake. There are people out there who want to do something. And by the grace of God and by the mercy of God, God said no. Why did God kill my little boy? Why did God put this guy in a wheelchair? Why did God? Why did God? Why did God? Why did God? This may be reason of, I don't know how many reasons there are. Maybe little boy would have been a terror to the world. Maybe little boy would have had uh, some, some devices in his head that would have been wicked. Why did God take that Christian... So young and all that. Maybe there was going to be something in his life that was going to be wicked. And God is sparing him. Listen, when that guy was committing fornication in the Corinth church, Paul said, turn him over to the devil for the destruction of the flesh. Why would Paul be so mean? He's not being mean. He's saying, Lord, let that guy die now and face the judgment seat of Christ now, than rather than have all his sins destroy any works he had. If you were to keep him living... He's going to get worse and worse and vile and vile. And if he's saved, he's going to stand the judgment seat of Christ. Nothing but sin. But what happened? Paul turned him over to Satan through God. Looks like Satan went out to him and the guy repented and got right. Just like Job. David sinned. He numbered the children of Israel. God sent Satan. God sent himself. The number gave him opportunity of three things to choose. David repented and got right. So there are some people out there, you better thank God for mercy and grace. And you realize that Satan does not have mercy and grace. If Satan was really in charge of this world, What do you think this world would be like? Let me, get, let me tell you how this world is going to be like. It's called the tribulation period. When God removes himself and removes the Holy Spirit. Only but 144,000. Only the raiment that he knows of the Jews. Go over and read the book of Revelation. Go read Daniel. Go read all the books that speak about the great tribulation period. And the tribulation period. Of all the things that are going on and during that time. And God's going to say, let, let, go for it. Do whatever you want. You want live Disneyland where, where things will start talking? Go ahead, Satan. Make the image talk like they do down Disneyland. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Those that think they're smart and, and all those that, you know, they come out of Bible cemeteries, God will catch them. God will have the last laugh. Imagine, now, imagine a, a born-again, true, Bible-believing, Christian, post-hole digger. Ph.D. Doesn't think that the King James Bible is the Word of God. Yet, Jesus said, my word shall never fail. My word shall never pass away. And every time he walks by the book of eternity, he sees the KJB mark on the Bible. <laughs> and imagine some angel come. And you didn't think that was the word. Boy, we're supposed to... Ah, Lord, just told me to just come over and do that. That's not the word, is it? God will give some people in their congregation a, a, a ignorant person to their standards, which will do much more than what they will do in the love of the Lord. The, but God's wisdom is much wiser than their wisdom. 
and the counsel of the forward that's a wicked person is carrying is carried headlong you going head first they meet with with darkness in the daytime they have no light and grope in the noonday as night there's no light grope is where you're feeling around you can't see you're trying where's that wall where's that piece of furniture where's there's no light in them they get up and preach you know rah, 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 and they have no light they're dead and their congregation is dead and they stand before the great white throne judgment with, it, with their congregation, the great white throne judgment. Wait till they start pointing fingers at them. Woe be the man that goes to hell with a flock that follows right behind them. Because they can talk in hell. I'd like to have eternity people pointing their burning hands at you and say, You're the reason. That's hell within itself. But he saveth the poor from the sword, from their mouth, and from their hand of the mighty. The mouth means the words. Kill them. And we just read a book about that with Esther. God protected them. So the poor have hope. The blessed hope. The Lord Jesus Christ today. And iniquity stop, stoppeth her mouth. There will be no iniquity in, he in heaven. In glory. In New Jerusalem. Behold. Happy is the man whom the Lord, who God corrected. Oh come on. Don't say that with Job. Happy. Come on Job. Be happy. Sing a happy song. Jesus loves me, this I know. Come on, Joe. Heavenly sunshine, heavenly sunshine. Come on, Joe. Why aren't you smiling? Why aren't you happy? What did, what did Solomon say? There's a time to be happy. There's a time to be sorrow. There's a time to rejoice. There's a, I mean, there is a time. Right now is not the happy time. And this guy right here is saying, isn't it great when the Lord brings his belt out? Yeah, because you're not getting it. Now, when God beats your butt, let's all go have a happy, glory, good time. Come on, start singing when, when Dad brings the bell. Glory, give me the bell. Glory, give me the bell. Oh, yeah, I need the bell. Glory when I get... No. No. It's always brighter on the other side. Therefore, despise not the chasing of the Almighty. 100% true statement. Hebrews 12, 5. It's quoted. Quotes Eliphaz. He says 100% right. He's quoted. But it's not the right time. When would be the right time? Job chapter 43. Job, next time the Lord puts you in the pot, take it a little better. For he maketh sore, God, and bindeth up. Satan will give you sores, Job, but he won't give you medicine, Job. God will give you sores, and he'll heal you. You say, well, I know people who are so, I know a Christian who is in a wheelchair in their entire life. Are they going to be in a wheelchair in New Jerusalem? Well, I know a, a missionary that worked over in the country, and they all had leprosy, and they trusted Jesus. The leprosy didn't go away. They didn't have the prosperity gospel. They didn't have enough faith to be healed. Are they going to have leprosy in New Jerusalem? All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. And if you're a bad boy Christian, as God is your father, he's going to give you sores. Because a rod across the behind, the rearing of a child, is not to be a delight. We're running into what Solomon preaches in the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. 
We're running into Hebrews. America's foolish. He don't give them time out. He don't give them cookies. And then you wonder why these, and these kids walk in these schools today with all these weapons and walk into a theater with all these weapons. You wonder why there's so much gun violence. Because you didn't take the little boy away from the video games and slap him on the rear end and make him throw it or burn it in the garbage. You thought it was cute. Or you didn't even care to watch what your children were watching or doing. And then you sit there, oh, why did my child do that? It's your fault, parent. You didn't correct them. And at either judgment, judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, you're going to stand to be judged. Parent. Bible correction is a Bible doctrine. You don't believe in it? That's your fault. Take it out with God, not me. I read it from the scriptures. He woundeth, and his hands make it whole. God is not going to leave you beaten unless you don't get right. That verse implies, listen, when God beats you, you are to adhere to God, and you are to make God heal you up by you getting right. I don't think God counts to ten and everything's going to be good. I can still be the bad boy. No. That verse implies that when God corrects you, you get right. And when you get right, then God will take care of you and heal you up. 100%? No. You may have to carry around some of those sins. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. Now we're in the, we are in the Old Testament, my friends. Read over there where Paul says the pearls of this, the pearls of this, the pearls of that, the pearls of that, pearls of the countrymen, pearls of the churchmen, pearls of the shipwrecks, this and that. And, this. and the answer to the New Testament Christians, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. When no evil will touch ye, Christian, is when you are in glory that no evil will touch you. If you die before the rapture, if you and we're in heaven before Revelation chapter 12, we will see Satan in heaven. But he ain't going to touch us. He ain't going to accuse us no more. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death. Death, you die in famine, you're, you're God's child, don't worry, I'm going to die with this famine. All the worst you can do is go to heaven. And in war from the power of the sword. So when Henry goes to the Marines and we go to war, you know, no bullet can touch me, I'm a Christian, now you're full. I tell you right now, if you have to use a gun or whatever, you, you put that aim there and say, Lord, direct this bullet. To your honor and glory, for Jesus' sake, I pray, amen. Now, you go in the Old Testament, read the stories of David and Solomon and all of them who had wars. Solomon didn't have any wars. And you see, those that are wicked like King Saul... His whole family died in one in one battle. We're le reading an Old Testament book. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. You want to believe that in a Baptist and Women's Fellowship of the Nursery Group? The backbiting of women of the gospel group of the of the I didn't say gospel, I meant gossip group. Seems like a gospel to them. Good tidings. Guess what I heard? How about when you, I'm on the street preaching for Jesus. I'm not going to endure for Jesus. And they get in there with that bad breath and start cussing you out. Lord, the Bible says thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. And they yelled at me. 
All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Jesus was yelled at. And marvel not the world hate me, know that the world hated me first, Jesus said. That's why you got to rightly divide the word of God. That's why it takes study. But if you got another Bible, don't say study. And when you study your Bible and rightly divide the, the Bible, what does, what does God say? God approves of you. So don't think that you can follow around with these, with these as a Christian. You make an exact opposite. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. Imagine talking to Job like that. Job said, this is what I feared came upon me. Now listen, as a born-again Christian, you're in, a, you're in, a, in an area called Tornado, Tornado Alley. Here comes the tornado. The, the sirens are going off. You're standing. I'm not going to be afraid. You're a fool. Get in that bomb shelter just like, or underground shelter just like everybody else does. You ain't going to call away. No wind and no faith and no nothing. I mean, God might be afraid when destruction comes. Okay, run through every red light in your life, Christian. And one of these days you're going to get it. Be afraid. Step out in front of all the buses that, that, that are in front of your path. You will be afraid. If you don't do it by the third or fourth time, you'll be stupid. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field. I have no idea what that means. And the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. Really? Go ahead. Huh? And destruction and famine... Thou shalt laugh. No. Because America's heading to that. Verse 22. And we're reading Lamentations. There's no laughing. Neither shall thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. Neither shall thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, I have no idea. And the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. In the millennium. But go hang out with, with, a, with a, a herd or whatever they are of rattlesnakes. Make sure you bring your venom. Or your antidote. Because they ain't going to be coming up and be glad to shake your hand or anything. And, you know, shall be peace with thee. I, I don't understand that outside of millennium, but you get the running of the bulls they have in Spain there. Well, there's no. I'm not calling the Bible a lie. I'm just saying, listen, you know, there's some things that we can't take. This right here I see is a millennial passage. Where in the millennium, all the curses are removed, all the animals, except for the snake. Where it says where a kid will take a lion as a pet. And put his hand in the cockatiel's den. I mean, then. Then. But then again, look at Daniel in the lion's den. Okay? And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace. Oh, your housing. There's no tabernacle. At least Moses' tabernacle that he builds for God. It's a home. It's a dwelling place. The Bible says our tabernacle of God is our bodies. And thou shalt visit thy habitation, your home spread, your homeland, and shalt not sin. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great. Really? Ten of his children of ten children dead. He's going to have grandchildren and great grandchildren. That's a laugh. If Job wasn't in his misery and his troubles, I I start belly laughing all the way down on the floor, chuckling. But like, this is not funny. He just told a a guy who lost all his children, "Well, thy seed shall prosper." Wait to Job chapter forty three to say that.
And thou shalt not sin. That's that's the eternity reference. He's jumping way over the church age, way over the tribulation, way over the millennium. He's in eternity. But there's only one problem with that. When he talks about the animals, there's going I don't think there's going to be animals in eternity. I don't know. Animals can't be saved. No dogs go to heaven. I'm sorry, no matter what you watch in here. You can have all the tears you want. Dead kitty cats end up in Chinese restaurants and all the other animals go back to the ground. And thy offspring, that's grandchildren and grandchildren, as the grass of the earth. That's eternity. Thou shalt come to thy grave in full age, and Job does in chapter 42. So he is a kind of a prophet. He is quoted in Hebrews. He does say things that are right, but he, God is angry with him for what he said. Like a shock of corn cometh into his, his season, full strength, produces all the seed in the husk that it's supposed to produce. Lo, this what have searched it, we have searched it, so it is. Hear it, and know thou it for thy good. Well, that's a big mouthful for him. And you got to remember who he's talking to, and the events that just happened. Now, Lord willing, next week, um, next, t tomorrow night, next week, Job answers. Job answers. Tomorrow night, Lord willing, or the next time we study.